This is your warning. The waters are stirring in the Pokemon card market. I'm Kakashi with Kanto Capital. I have to bring up some very, very intriguing market action that's been taking place lately. Because I'm a long-term holder, I'm always trying to look at the big picture. Uh, and I had something else planned, but what I noticed recently was shocking. And it's something you should know that it's happening. So really quickly, there's been a few people in the comments lately asking if the bubble has popped now. I need you to do two things if that's you or if maybe you're new to this channel. First, I want you to watch my most recent market analysis video and it reveals the actual data rather than opinions. So I will leave a link for that video in the description or in the comments. Step number two, make sure you watch that video and then watch this one completely from beginning to end because you're gonna see how what is happening now very much aligns with the charts that I uncovered in the other video. So please, if you haven't watched the market analysis video, it will give you a better context about the market now, and it makes the news in this video more valuable to you as a collector and investor. All right, and with that said, let's get to some of the recent market movements that I've found interesting lately. What's happening right now, I think, is just incredibly intriguing. First up, Darkness of Blaze. So Darkness of Blaze booster boxes have still managed to increase in this current market and is now up to around $140 per booster box. This is approximate because of, there's been a lot of volatility. Also very relevant to Darkness of Blaze, the Charizard V Max, the regular one inside of Darkness of Blaze, it has finally dropped under $100. It looks like we're settling somewhere around $80 for the Charizard V Max. So it's a significant point that it actually dropped below $100, but we'll see how things go moving forward, especially with the booster boxes continuing to increase in value right now. Next, Vivid Voltage. Now, Vivid Voltage booster boxes, this is a very hot set right now. People are really excited. They are ripping these packs open, and the booster boxes have also moved up to about $160 for a booster box. People are loving the amazing rares inside of Vivid Voltage. There are a ton of chase cards. All the cards from the Japanese set that we were hoping would make it to the English set, they are here and people are loving it. So with regards to the prices on Darkness of Blaze and Vivid Voltage, it's important to note that we have a couple of very unique factors going into and affecting these prices. First is, of course, we have record demand with Pokemon. We have this historic bull market and that is just creating a ton of demand with all these new collectors coming in as well as returning collectors who maybe haven't been in the hobby for a very long time. Next, due to the craziness of the year that 2020 has been, we have been experiencing supply chain issues, not just in Pokemon, but just in the world in general. So those supply chain issues are also affecting the way that Pokemon is able to deliver product to us. So it'll be interesting to see as the dust settles on these two very unique situations where the prices are gonna go for such modern products like Darkness Blaze and Vivid Voltage. On top of that, we do know that reprints are coming for both sets. So even though they are allocated, we'll see how that actually affects the prices moving forward. Also sticking with modern, looking at Champion's Path, I'm only gonna look at the Elite Trainer boxes, uh, but the Elite Trainer boxes right now are holding very strong at about $80. So even though the attention has really moved on from Champion's Path, the Elite Trainer boxes are holding very well. So we'll see if maybe another wave of Elite Trainer boxes can finally bring that price down closer to MSRP. If not, it's going to be holding very strong through multiple reprints. And of course, we have to talk about the set that everyone's going crazy for right now, and that is Shiny Star V. For those of you who are not familiar, Shiny Star V is actually a Japanese set that was just released very recently. Right now, Shiny Star V booster boxes now upon release, and now as people are getting really excited to open these packs, we are seeing Shiny Star V boxes selling for approximately $130 to $140 each. So even though we're hearing some people say they love the set, 
and other people that are not quite as excited for the set. The demand has just been incredible. People are still on that shiny card chase. And so Shiny Star V is just performing incredibly well at release right now. And so with everything being so nice and so shiny and so bright right now, of course we gotta bring up something else, and that is XY Evolutions. So let's start with the Evolutions booster boxes. So even with the massive price spike, Evolutions booster boxes are still holding incredibly well. We are still solidly in the $400 to $450 each for the booster boxes. The single booster packs are also doing very well, and they are still holding well within the $8 to $10 range. However, it is not all good news for Evolutions because the Evolutions Charizards, the ones with the base set artwork, those are down big. The fact that the sealed product of XY Evolutions has held so well, basically it hasn't moved in price, but we've seen the singles, the most valuable chase card in the set, retrace so significantly. We'll have to see how the prices move forward going for each of those different items. And of course, while we're on the topic of base set artwork, let's talk about the base set Charizard Unlimited PSA 9. So those have now been selling consistently for about $2,000 a piece, but I'd say it's really closer to about $1,900 each. And so this is again a pretty significant retrace from the highs of, I believe it was somewhere around $5,500 at the peak of the bull run. So this price movement is very interesting, but it's not really surprising at all. If I do a serious analysis on this in the future or in a future video, of course I'll address this and what I'm looking for at that point in time. But right now, I don't really see anything surprising. But on the topic of surprising, here's what I actually find very surprising, very interesting. And that is the Charizard PSA 9 Japanese base set card. And this is actually huge and maybe in some ways a monumental point in Pokemon. And maybe it means nothing. So this doesn't mean things will change. But this is very, very big news. The Japanese base set Charizard PSA 9 has actually matched the price of the unlimited Charizard, which I find just incredible. So I actually miss this detail, but the Japanese and the English base set unlimited Charizards had begun to mirror their prices since around October. So just to be clear, this wasn't a perfect match. And sometimes we'd see, let's say, the Japanese version would be valued higher, and then other times the English Unlimited card would be valued higher. Equivalent Japanese cards have always just been valued quite a bit lower than English cards. So to see the Japanese base set Charizard card now even with the Unlimited card is huge. And again, I'm only specifically referencing the PSA 9s. Of course, there'll be some variability as we go into the different grades. But as usual, I like the PSA 9s just because we've already been looking at the unlimited PSA 9 for quite a while. And then on top of that, there's a much higher volume and availability of those cards. But to see Japanese base set and the unlimited cards starting to match in value to me is just huge. Of course, it's not just a clear picture and we just can't always make that direct comparison because first the Japanese base set is older. It's about three years older. And looking at the population reports, right now the Japanese population report is much, much more limited. So again, these aren't necessarily equal comparisons, but to me this still raises a huge flag that the waters are stirring in the Pokemon card market. Some examples of potential consequences. We could maybe see the Japanese base set cards start to go down in value and retrace. Maybe we could see the unlimited cards, the unlimited base set cards, start to move up in price. Maybe we see Japanese sets, all of them, or many of them, start to move up in price. Maybe as demand starts to increase for the Japanese versions of cards. Or maybe, like I mentioned earlier, maybe it's nothing and it's just a unique situation related to these two cards. But otherwise, as expected, right now we're just seeing a lot of fluctuations in price all across the hobby which is pretty normal for the most part. Some sets and cards are going up in value, some are going down in value, some just generally with some sideways action. Right now, 
I've mostly seen nothing interesting in terms of price action and nothing that signals the end of a bull market yet. Keyword, yet. I will reveal why we're nowhere close to confirmation in a future video if that's still the case by then, but we'll just have to see how everything plays out as we go forward. So overall, the most exciting news really that I saw was again the base set Charizard cards, both the English and the Japanese versions, and just watching those prices start to meet. It does technically make a lot of sense due to supply differences, but there's also a significant demand difference as well. And I'd imagine that the Japanese PSA pop report might not be fully fleshed out yet because these cards really weren't worth much until very recently. So much like a lot of other cards in the hobby right now, we should expect to see some more PSA submissions start to pick up for the Japanese base set Charizard card as well as other cards. And then we'll see how that flushes out over time and if maybe there's a large supply sitting at home somewhere and everyone's going to start sending them in or maybe that's most of them. I hope you found these updates informative with some cards and set prices down big. Let me know how that's affecting you and how you're feeling about the market right now. Your comments really helps me address some of your concerns when I make these videos. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and like this video as well if you found this helpful. We cover the Pokemon card market, investing, and everything in between. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your amazing support. I'm Kakashi with Kanto Capital.